Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Farnoosh Tarabi. I'm honored to be here at the very first ever Blogger Health event. Thank you so much for having me. So we're almost finished with January. How are we doing with resolutions? This conference is very well-timed. It's a great opportunity to really at this point examine how we can all each live, uh, a, a live life well. Um, I've already spoken to many of you throughout the day at our Chase Slate booth about how you choose to live life well on your terms and in your way. I've learned that some of you are running your own businesses, you're trying to incorporate more travel into your life, some napping, outsourcing laundry. And one obvious but simple way to live life well is to fuel your passion. And my passion, nerdily enough, is personal finance. It's something that I guess I couldn't help but to arrive at a place where I'm obsessed with money. My parents are Middle Eastern. Uh, my, they're immigrants. We talked about money all the time for better or worse. And so I've arrived now at a place in my career where I feel like I'm doing what I was always destined to do. I'm following my passion. And early on, I discovered that when you have control of your finances, you have control of your life. And that is incredibly liberating. You have to be your biggest advocate when it comes to pretty much anything in life, but especially your personal finances. And I think if you can take on that mindset, it's incredibly empowering. I've had the privilege of turning my passion, money, personal finance, into a career. And it's given me the opportunity to be a speaker, to be an author, to write for places like Oprah Magazine, Glamour, to be on the Today Show. I'm really proud of a recent passion project of mine, which is So Money. It's a personal finance podcast where we interview people like the, the women we've seen today, Jillian Michaels and others about their money habits, their financial failures. And so I have the great opportunity to put my passion to use through that podcast. And most recently, I've partnered with Chase Slate, which is what has brought me to blog her health today. And that partnership for me has benefits that are twofold. One is that I get to exercise my passion, talk about money to the masses. But also, I get to hopefully, through my advice, empower women and men to live the good life, to improve their health and wellness. Now, speaking of health and wellness, Finances without a debt are impacting our overall well-being. We're not able to sleep at night when we have debt. We might be getting into arguments with our loved ones around money. And Blogger Health actually did a survey finding that 94%, almost everybody, said their well-being is directly connected to their financial health. How many of you would say that that sometimes impacts you? Yes. It's, it does not discriminate, right? Money problems, we all have them to some extent. 50% said that they have actually experienced health issues due to financial stress. So it's not a coincidence that when you put yourself first by catering to your physical and your mental health, your well-being, by exercising, by getting enough sleep. Ariana's probably going to talk about that. Meditating. I don't do that. Spending quality time with friends. I've tried. This all can greatly impact your financial well-being. When you have clarity and calm in your mind and in your body, it's an aspiration. We're not all there yet. I'm not. Your bank account always benefits. You feel like you can take on anything and your credit card debt included. Now some more good news is that a majority of the survey respondents, 98% said that they want to improve their financial health in 2018. Raise your hand if that's you. Yeah, I wanna save more, I wanna, I wanna spend wisely, I want to make more money. And I'll be the first to admit that when it comes to money and personal finances, it can be intimidating. There's a lot to track. But it's also an opportunity, if this is your goal, to really empower yourself and achieve financial health. And so some advice for us, really quick before I leave. Um, one thing is that if you are someone who feels like you're overwhelmed, you don't know where to start, I would just say or if you feel like you know, you've made mistakes and you can't get over them, forgive yourself, 
okay? It's easy to create a personal narrative, and I hear it all the time, and I've been guilty of this myself at one point in my life, that I'm not good about money. I'm not good with money. I'm, this is too hard. It's too complicated. I don't have the time. Um, this is a real roadblock to progress. And I don't know, but I can't say for certainty, but I do feel like I run into more women who, who harbor these insecurities around money, and it's unfounded. It's just a story we've somehow picked up along the way, and it's absolutely false. There's also power in reverse engineering. So here's another tip. When you're trying to figure out how to get yourself to a better place financially, discover your why first. Why are you doing this? To save just to save, to get out of debt just to get out of debt, that wouldn't be motivation enough for me. I need a carrot. I need to know that there is something beautiful at the end of this that I can really appreciate that will fulfill me. Is it that you want to start that business, buy that home, start that family? All those goals carry price tags. All those whys carry price tags. Figure out what that cost is and reverse engineer by going month to month until you reach that goal. And then finally, find a supportive community around this goal of becoming financially healthy. Everybody in this room, we're a community. You know, if there's nothing I've learned about personal finance and building your wealth and learning about money is that you can't no do it all on your own. And we don't have all the answers in a silo. We have to ask questions. We have to get vulnerable, talk to our friends, talk to our partners about money. And through that, we can, we can grow. So those are some mindset techniques that I find sometimes are more important than budgeting and, and uh, you know, the math behind your money. But the numbers do matter as well. And that's something I also want to touch on. So just like with your health, it's important to know your weight and your BMI and your blood pressure. In the financial world, scores are also a big part of getting healthy. And one of the most important scores is your credit score. Who knows their credit score? Oh, wow, fantastic. Fine, great. So just to touch on credit for just a little bit longer, you know, um, you know, credit plays a huge role in your life. It has a tremendous impact on your ability to achieve major milestones, whether that's to rent your own place, start that business, buy a car, own a home, the freedom to pursue your passions. Knowing your credit score helps you assess where you stand financially and how close or far away you are from achieving your goals. And there are, are a few tried and true habits of people with a healthy credit score. One is they check their scores well and often. I do this through my Chase app. Chase Slate offers free FICO credit scores every month to their users. They also have credit cards. They're not people who just live on a cash basis. You have to have credit to build credit. People with high credit scores also pay their bills on time every month. They automate those payments. It's a big part of your credit score calculation. And then they avoid maxing out their cards. Now before I end, a few more words of financial support if you need it. And if you feel overwhelmed, I want to tell you that you don't have to do everything today. You might have a really long list of financial to-dos. Save more, invest better, buy the house. You don't have to do it all. Maybe just pay your bills on time. That would be good. But think of this as a layering process. Baby steps. Create a timeline. Um, set mini goals. And reward yourself along the way. Finally, it's important that um, when you are evaluating your personal finances that you don't get discouraged. You don't get frustrated. Find those little moments of celebration. When you finally hit that savings target for the month, this may sound counterintuitive, treat yourself. Do something fun with that little bit of savings if it is going to encourage you to keep on the right path. One of the reasons I've partnered with Chase Slate over the last three years, it's been a very great partnership, is because they do share my passion for personal finance. They brought me here. We do a lot of great events together, connecting with individuals. They offer the tools to empower ourselves for financial health. And um, these are tools that you can use throughout the year as you are checking in on your finances individually or with your family. I hope you'll stay and stop by at our booth, Chase Slate, for more. If you haven't taken our money personality quiz, 
I encourage you to do it. Find out if you are a money honey or if you need improving. And we've also got some swag left. So I encourage you to come over and get your swell bottles. I was directed to tell you this because we would love for you to enjoy one. Thank you so much. And looking forward to announcing the winners of our contest later tonight. Thank you.